Following the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, questions of school safety surfaced around the country, even here at Canfield High School. From walkouts to board meetings to concerns from students, we were there for it all. Stay tuned for this special episode of the show. Exactly one month ago to this day, 17 people were killed and 16 more injured, making the Stoneham Douglas High School shooting one of the world's deadliest school massacres. In the aftermath of this tragic event, many of the survivors are taking matters into their own hands and have inspired us to partake in this activist movement. One of the main reasons why we are here today is because of the dialogue that was started by our peers who survived the Parkland shooting at Stoneman Douglas High School. They are from a community not unlike our own. The area is not run down or impoverished, their test grades are quite good, they had a police officer on campus, but still 17 people were killed. We would like to take a moment and recognize those people. Alyssa Aladef, 14. A soccer player with an amazing personality who loved to write in her free time. Martin Duque Anguiano, 14. A freshman at the school who loved his family more than anything. Jamie Gutenberg, 14. A freshman who loved her family and was loved by her family, missed tremendously by her father. Gina Montalto, also 14. A freshman and the member of the school's marching band Winter Guard. Elena Petty, 14. A member of the JROTC program and helped with her church to clean up much of the af aftermath of Irma. Alex Schachter, 14. A trombone player in the marching band who always strived to make his family proud more than anything. Luke Hoyer, 15. Freshman basketball enthusiast who was on the team and loved his family. Peter Wang, 15. Another member of the JROTC program who selflessly gave his life while holding open a door to shelter others. He was buried in a full military honor ceremony. Carmen Shentrup, 16. A National Merit Scholarship semifinalist who was a standout student. Helena Ramsey, 17. A senior who was a spark to everybody that knew her and always focused on her academics first. Joaquin Oliver. Loved playing basketball at the local rec center and had just recently received his citizenship to the U.S. Nicholas Dwart, 17. A senior swimming star who had just earned a scholarship to Indianapolis University. Meadow Pollock, 18. A senior who planned on attending Lynn University in Boca Raton in the fall. Aaron Feiss, 37. An assistant football coach and a security guard who threw himself in front of the shots to shield students. Scott Beagle, 35. A geography teacher killed opening his door for more students to take refuge in his room. Chris Hickson, 49 a wrestling coach and athletic director who was known as a family man with a great sense of humor and a great personality. 
Our voices don't end when we walk into or out of this auditorium. In fact, this is only the beginning. So because all of you clearly care so much about this issue and because we care so much about this issue and the administration and everyone in this country should care so much about this issue, I would really just encourage all of you to work with us and the administration in the future to continue working on these proposals, right? We don't want this to happen ever again. In the statistics, we can see that America has a severe mental health problem. Even worse, America has a very lethal mental health problem. Um, according to CDC, one death by suicide happens in the US every 12 minutes. A couple of reasons why this happens is because of alienation, hopelessness, and this often is enforced by this dichotomy that I thought of between the older generations and the younger generations. It seems to me that frequently um, the mental health awareness aspect of this within our schools is frequently glossed over. But the thing that we can all agree on is that there seems to be an issue that needs to be talked about, needs to be solved. Um, my peers and I call upon the adults in this nation, in this room, in the administration of Canfield and in the state of Ohio to take charge of this problem by starting to engage with their uh, youth about the mental health issues that they might have. We have created a student's um, safety proposal that we will be um, proposing to the Board of Education. Um, the meeting is on March 21st, and we hope that everyone who is 100% behind us with this plan be there to support us. Um, many different topics that are on this plan are student IDs, more officers, the role of counselors, proposal for additional ALICE training, school upgrades, and a school crisis team. It's incredible that you all have chosen to use your voices today. You've all chosen to work towards preventing this from happening again. But our voices don't stop once we leave this auditorium. There are adults and there are parents and there are teachers looking in on this, thinking that we are too young or too naive to do anything past what happens today. But we need to do everything in our power to prove that wrong. Regardless of what change you feel is necessary to prevent this from happening again, um, whatever you believe in, you should try to make it happen. You can go to school board meetings. They will give you a sp slot to speak. You can contact your legislators. Their emails and numbers are on the internet. You can find them very easily. And you can even talk to the administration because they are willing to listen to you and listen to what you feel deserves to happen. Because no matter how young we are, we are the future of America. We are the ones who can prevent this from ever happening again. We are the ones who are saying never again. So no matter where you stand on the issue, there's one thing that we can all agree on, and that's that children shouldn't die in schools. So let's make that happen. So how did it feel to speak in front of that vast audience at the assembly this morning? Um, it was really amazing. Um, I don't even know if I could put it into words because that's how like incredible it was. I was so like honored and happy to be a part of something, you know, like larger than myself and like a part of something that was happening all across the country. It was really special to me and also like something that is really important to me, right? So it was really amazing. I cried a little bit. I don't cry very much, but I did. It happened. Oh, I was so nervous, especially I know the majority of the students who spoke do speech and debate. I don't, and <laughs> I was so nervous, but I felt that I was proud to be a part of something that was so special and that I was so proud that so many people came and listened and heard not only what I had to say, but what we all had to say. I think in here, especially in Canfield High School, there will be a huge change because we are taking a, I think it's four page, four page safety proposal to the board meeting. We are going to propose it and there are already talks of change floating around, rumors and stuff like that. And even on the national scale, I think it's going to take a while, but legislators started to notice already. So that's what the original goal was, to get legislators involved. And we achieved that goal today, and I'm really proud of the whole, the whole country, honestly. The first school board meeting after the walkout was on March 21st. With school safety weighing heavy on everyone's minds, it was clear that would be a topic that was greatly discussed. There, students and parents were able to reveal their opinions and concerns regarding school safety. Well, we're here today to talk to the board members, to inform them about our plan, and to try and get things moving with the school and yeah, our increase safety our safety. Plan. We as a group started talking about the Parkland shooting that happened on February 14th, in which 17 individuals died in the Stoneman Douglas High School. And so we began to become concerned about the safety within our own school and how and what we can do to work on that. 
We realized that we were not the only people in Canfield High School who were concerned, which is why we sent out a survey to ask our peers how they felt. What we found through our 263 responses was that despite 72.2% of students feeling safe, 63.7% of them worry about a shooting happening at Canfield. And we found that when we asked them to rank how well, how comfortable they felt with our safety plan at Canfield, from one being concerned to five being completely confident, the average rating was only a 2.81. We can do better than that as community. Um, had a meeting uh, in the center office this week with our uh, Chief Colucci, and actually your proposal, I, I gave it to him. And we had dialogue, and we had conversation on many of these items, if not all of these items. And, and so I want you to understand that it didn't stop with us. We surely are sharing it with safety forces. It's not only police, but it's fire. So we want to make sure that uh, you folks understand we are, we are taking it serious, and, and we should hear you folks. So, just so you understand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. With the rising concern of school safety, we decided to interview students at Canfield High School. We asked them personal questions about their safety and comfort levels at the school. Like day to day I do, but with everything going on it definitely puts me on edge and makes me a little bit more worried about um, my safety. Um, yes, I definitely feel safe here, however I think in everyone I think is just a little bit more aware of their surroundings and just always has it in the back of their mind that anything could really happen. Recently, not as much, but yeah. I myself, I feel safe in school because I feel like the chances of anything crazy happening are so minuscule that there's a greater chance of something different happening outside of school to me. I do, I mean, of course, like, it's definitely scary with, like, what's went on, and, you know, it was nice with, like, everything that was going on Wednesday, having, like, the reassurance of, like, having like, a lot of authorities and this, that, safe measures taken. Um, so I definitely felt safe that day. But, you know, I guess every day on a general basis, I, yeah. I mean. Do you feel you have a voice in school policy? I think if, uh, I think that we do. And I think uh, we, even, we have even more of a voice in numbers. Um, so I think that the walkout's going to be a good opportunity for us to have all of our voices heard. As of right yes. now, we don't, but maybe after all of this happens, yeah. we might. Maybe we're, uh, we want to open it up, not just for like a few students, but, but so, all for students, everyone. Yeah. so all students have like a say. I feel like if maybe enough of us as students yeah, would true. come together, then we might have a voice, but I feel like it's just one or two of us. I don't feel like we have a big enough voice. If you had asked me that a week ago, I would have probably said no, but after, you know, seeing how this whole thing has kind of transformed, I would say yes. Do you feel like you can go to the guidance office with problems? Like, if you're having a bad day, can you go there and talk to them? Yeah, I think so. But I think, um, like, I think, like, with most high schools, like, the guidance department, they're stretched, like, thin. They have a lot to do, so you may not always be able to get in. They might be at meetings and stuff like that. I feel like I theoretically can, but I wouldn't just because I don't really want to bother them. Uh, yeah, I've been there a couple times for personal issues and everything else in between. Uh, I feel comfortable going in there with Ms. Kalina, Ms. Duda, uh, and Dr. H at any point to either fix the schedule or just talk about something going on. So if I ever had an issue, I would go to them. And I think this can hold true for anybody. If anybody had any problems and you went to go see them, they'd probably, you know, regardless of how busy they are with everything else, they wouldn't hesitate, you know, to drop what they're doing and like help you out with what's coming. Are you comfortable speaking with the administration? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, once again, I luckily I have a good relationship with all of them, and you know, it's 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 nice to have that because I can, you know, really talk to them about anything. A lot of my friends will sometimes ask me to go ask, you know, Mr. Mulvaney or Mr. Mullane certain questions. So yeah, I have a good relationship. I've never actually personally like talked to the administrators. I went to Civic Day last year. Other than that, I haven't really had a conversation with them. Not uncomfortable, but definitely not like fully like, yeah, I'm gonna go talk to Mr. Moldovan about this. I don't know. I guess I'm about 50-50 on that. Comfortable speaking with administrators if I need a question asked or if I have a, a problem. So, yes. I believe that it is our First Amendment right to protest things that we find unjust. Even though we are children, 
that doesn't make us less of citizens. It's children who are affected by this, and therefore we should be the ones being allowed to speak out. I'd support, like, the gun laws. Like, I, it's unfortunate, like, the 17 kids died, but, like, I support my Second Amendment right to have, like, weapons, and I don't want to really be um, limited to that. So what was your reason for, to be at the assembly today? Um, I went to the assembly because I feel that like the issues that they were talking about, like school safety um, and mental health issues in school was really important. And um, I think that the message that like the people that were organizing it and that like were talking, the message that they were trying to get out was really important. I believe we need a lot more school safety than we currently have just because times are changing, people aren't as nice as they used to be. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a huge gun problem so much as people aren't as nice as they used to be and we need to compensate for that with more school, school, sorry, school security. <laughs> what I think we need to do is, I mean, I'm a big fan of the whole student ID thing. Um, I definitely also think that we need to have more than one cop between all four schools. That is something desperately needed, maybe two in each school even, honestly. Honestly, I'm not sure what we we could do as like students to make it more safe since like we're restricted by the people who are like running the school, but I feel like if we get like more people like on the board of education and stuff mm -hmm. and just more people in general, like teachers to just listen to what we have to say, then we can get a lot done. Well, I actually I, I feel safe at Canfield schools. Um nothing's really happened out of the ordinary here. It's an ordinary school, but I did take into consideration stuff that's happened across the country, like the shootings at Parkland, Columbine, Sandy Hook. Um, but for the most part, I feel really safe here. What are your thoughts about the walkout? I think that it's very dangerous. Um, I think a moment of silence might be more appropriate than an actual walkout. Do you feel safe in Canfield schools? I mean, yeah. I mean, anything can happen anywhere, so. Is there anything Canfield can do to make our school safer? Maybe like ID cards for everybody or something like that. What are your thoughts on the walkout? I think it's really important to do what you feel is the right thing to do, whether it's to walk out or not. Um, if you do walk out, I think it's really important that you stay calm and um, you don't cause any disruptions within classes. Um, and I think if it's something that you want to participate in, you definitely should get involved and consider your reasons for doing so and why you think it's important. I agree. I think everyone needs to stand up for what they believe in, but it's important that everyone stay safe. Just days before the March 14th National School Walkout, we sat down with six students who played an integral role in orchestrating the event at CHS. From the questions that needed answers, like what's your reason behind this movement, to discussions about safety that are a cause for concern at CHS, our roundtable covered it all. Our goals are kind of split into a couple categories. Like one of the most important ones is that it is a memorial for the people who died. The other things we're doing is promoting school security, promoting mental health, promoting action from our legislatures to ensure that something terrible like the Parkland shooting and other school shootings never happen again and just trying to end that kind of violence. We're not promoting for the advantagement of the Second Amendment. We're merely just saying that we want something to be done rather than nothing. And I think it's been a long time that people have waited around waiting for things to change without actually doing anything. So here's what we're doing. We're not going against our administration here. We're going to the state legislature and we're against them. Not just our own administration or anything like that. People think we're against, you know, people in the front office and stuff like that. It's not that we want people from the legislature to hear our voice and hear our opinions on these issues. It'll be on the news and people will feel sorry, but then after a while, all the sympathy is just gone and it fades. But these students, and I think that we can all agree that it's come to the point where it's too much and we now we want to change something. And thankfully, like based on those students who started this, like we're definitely us and I know students around the country are starting to get behind them. I think one of the reasons why this shooting feels so different is because they had a lot of things going right for their school. They had a resource officer on campus. They actually had a lot of things in common with Canfield, and I think that's one of the reasons why it struck home with a lot of kids in this area. Additionally, have you guys seen like like the videos of the kids like on their Snapchats? Like, oh yeah, in school? the like, social media when was I watched crazy. That, like I literally like shook. Like I, I was absolutely taken aback. I like could not even begin to fathom that like 
I use that same social media network as like these kids, like they're so similar to me. And like, I, you could hear them scream, you could hear them being terrified, like you could hear the gunshots. And that was like something where I was like, okay, I cannot ignore this at all. We took like a week and we um, dedicated ourselves to understanding what kind of um, safety measures we have in our school as of right now and how we can make those more secure and make us more safe. Um, we looked at student ID cards, we've mm -hmm. considered the least popular one we considered was definitely checking bags as you come into the building. It would be hypocritical for us not to end up going through the bureaucratic route at this point because if we want to say that all we care about is getting people to do something, if all we did was host this protest then it wouldn't be effective, effective and we wouldn't be doing what we're preaching. So we plan to send a letter to our congressman in Ohio and hopefully that can get him to notice us. I think the fact that we're trying and we're mm -hmm. looking into it as students, we're trying to make our school better, maybe they will listen to us and they will act more. Like now, we're not just seeing, um, you know, like the adults that are running the world pass by and continually doing the same exact thing, it's now the youth that is being inspired and like whether or not those are good or bad things, uh, like or whether or not you agree with the proposals being had by the people that are sitting here, the fact that it's happening is promising. I think that the key here is to remember that what we're doing is a protest. So you're never going to make everybody happy, mm -hmm. which is what I think that if we were optimistic and naive is what we would have expected. However, we did expect some resistance. We did expect our voices in some aspects to be quieted. And I think that's okay to an extent because when we think about it, we don't want to be completely against administration. We don't want to be completely against everything that's the normal. Regardless of whether or not people like what's happening, regardless of whether or not they agree, like things are changing as a result of the people in our generation doing things exactly like this. That's why it's yeah. so important right now. I think like a really important thing to remember is that all, oftentimes the people that commit mass atrocities to this scale are very alienated and very alone. Um, and I think I really want to applaud the administration right now for creating such an environment such as Campbell High School that I think does a very good job of trying to like eliminate that stigma and try to make everyone feel included in some aspect. I really think that Canfield is honestly like one of the best high schools like in the area. Like I love Canfield High School. So like like when, when we talk about like things that we're doing to try and like prevent these things from happening, I just want to make it clear that like Canfield does a very good job of trying to include all of its students.